welcome to the 2009-2010 High School Basketball Coaches Preview Show. My name is Mike Martin. Joining me is the coach, Chris Wright. Chris, why don't you tell our uh, audience who the coaches are this year? Yeah, we have all the same coaches that we've had over a number of years. We have Tom Desatel at Sheboygan North and uh, Tim Schultz from Sheboygan South and Todd Decker from Sheboygan Lutheran and Brett Flipsey from Sheboygan Christian. Well, Brett's an addition from last year because he got sick and never did make the show. Yeah, that's true, and, but he had a nice season anyways. Yeah, and they're going to be tough again this year. We're going to step out, and we come back, I'll have Todd Decker from uh, Lutheran High School. For 37 million Americans, this is life, living below the poverty line. Find out what you can do. Please, don't let one more fall. Go to PovertyUSA.org and get involved. Joining me on the set is Todd Decker from Lutheran High. Todd, thanks a lot for stopping in. I know you have practice coming up. Uh, last year was uh, not a very successful year. You finished up 5-15, and 5-11 and 11 in conference. Uh, talk a little bit about last year and you know what you need to change this year to uh, be a better squad. Well, first, thanks for having us on. I think you guys do a good job with covering the basketball, and I really appreciate that. Yeah, last year we had a down year, and uh, had some things, some injuries, and some great issues with some kids, and it kind of hurt us, and we had to kind of go the young route, and uh, that, that did, the inexperience kind of hurt us, so um, hopefully that's going to help us this year. We got some uh, nice players coming back, and we're looking forward to some strong JV players, so uh, I'm real excited about this season and looking forward to it. Now, one of the things that I didn't have on my list, but we talked about prior to going on, what had to do with recruiting and, and getting kids to go to Lutheran High, and uh, you had mentioned that uh, uh, the enrollment was actually down a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about you know uh, private schools and getting kids to come, and you know, and what's your take on all of that? Well, first of all, uh, if I'm going to recruit, I'm going to recruit for Lutheran High because the Christ-centered education to me that's very important, and that's my first recruiting that I would do. Uh, then we add basketball and other sports, and that would be great. Uh, but as far as recruiting a kid just for basketball, uh, that's not what we're about at Lutheran High. It's uh, about that Christ-centered education, and uh, then we want to help the students become Christian leaders one student at a time. Well, one of the things you mentioned about the enrollment going down was the economic times. Yeah, uh, it's pretty tough, and we have parents that really give up a lot to have our kids go to Lutheran High. It is an expense. Uh, worthwhile expense having three kids go there myself uh, but uh, there is an additional cost and when people come in to look at it it's, that's just the way it is but uh, um, it's well worth it. You lost some senior leadership from last year and uh, most teams are led by their seniors and uh, you know as the seniors go usually the team goes not always but uh, how do you see uh, your team this year in terms of uh, senior leadership and uh, who are you going to look for to provide that leadership? Well, we have a third-year captain in Dan Salzbrenner, and that doesn't happen very often. No. Um, and he's a guard and our point guard who's a leader uh, and a, a great young man. We have Josh Walrich coming back from a pretty uh, good second half of the season as far as a captain. Zach Blindo, our senior, will be giving us some leadership. And uh, we're going to throw Sam in there too, Sam Decker, my son. Uh, he was voted captain of the team. That doesn't happen with a sophomore, but I think the kids know he's played a lot of basketball, and uh, he shows leadership on and off the court, too. Sam was your leading scorer last year, and uh, what other kinds of roles will he have to take on to uh, provide leadership for the team? Well, he had a good start of the year, and then we lost some scores, and uh, we had to put a lot on his shoulders for a freshman, and he handled it well. We're looking for big things from him. He grew. He's at almost at 6'6 right now, so he's, he wow. was 6'2 at the end of the year, and now he's almost 6'6, so we can use him in different spots this year. One of the things that's happening with uh, the football end of it, and I'm not talking about the combination team, but I'm just mm -hmm. talking about football in general with yes. this region kind of a setup and, and breaking up some of the conference. Do, do you see that possibly happening with basketball? Uh, I don't know about our conference. I think it's more at the divisions, the one, two, three, and four for basketball uh, with uh, the enrollments and those type of things. I, I don't think the CLC will be affected that way conference-wise, but I see there's, there might be some changes with enrollment and the private school part of it, yes. Now, right away coming up, 
you got a week of practice in, and I believe it's after seven days you can have your first game, and you guys are going to have one right after yeah. seven. Don't get me going on that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but any, well, let's get going on that then. What 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 do you see as a problem with that? And and I know you got Green Bay, uh, Northeastern, Wisconsin coming up. Well, as a coach, and we can do the scheduling, but uh, with the type of scheduling we have, I wish we could have more practices before the first game and. Uh, we're going to change that a little bit up at our school and maybe uh, start a little bit later because uh, we need more time. I don't think that we have enough time. We rush the kids into things. And we do have a game tomorrow uh, against Green Bay New Luther, and they're going to be some challenges for us. They got, real, they got two real nice players. But um, we got a style of ball. We had a scrimmage against some of the uh, bigger schools on Saturday and, and did real well, and I'm excited about that. We saw some things that we wanted to do, and uh, it worked out. One of the things that uh, a coach has to decide on every year is their starting lineup, and uh, you obviously have to do the same thing. Al McGuire had, a, had an interesting take. You know, once he established his starting lineup, he just kept it that way all year, barring injuries and that. What is your philosophy on uh, starting? And uh... I'm pretty solid with my starters. Uh, we, we think this year we're going to have some kids come off the bench as far as a spark goes, uh, but we're. Uh, I don't change up my starting unit very often. Maybe one or two things. If the kid's not scoring, we see something. Or matchups, uh, then I might change some things. But I'm pretty good about the starters and staying that way. Okay, let's let's finish this up, uh, Todd, and uh, talk a little bit about the conference. And uh, Christian looks to be like a real powerhouse. And uh, how do you see Lutheran fitting in? And how do you see the whole league shaking out this year? Well, every year I say this, but the CLC is really strong this year. We have from top to bottom. We have very dedicated coaches. They've been there qu quite long, and that's kind of neat to see. Uh, Christian has a great ball club coming back, a lot of experience, good fundamental kids. Uh, Kevin at Oostburg does a nice job, and, and Howard's Grove and Cedar Grove has some nice kids, and uh, coaches do a good job there. I'd like to be up in that, um, in that top part with those guys, and I think we can compete with them this year. We're gonna, our margin for error is slim, but I think that we can do a, a good job against them. But yeah, Christian, I think would be the team that you want to beat this year with all their guys coming back. So it'll be fun. We want to see where we're going to fit in with that. Well, we have you three times on the schedule this year, so uh, hopefully we'll see. We got you twice against Christian. I know those will be tough games in Enozaki, but uh, it'll be interesting seeing your ball club play this year. Well, we're, uh, we like the support and having you guys come in, and, and uh, we're looking forward to the season. Well, thank you very much, Coach, and uh, good luck this season. And uh, when we come back, I'll have uh, Tim Schultz from South. <music> Joining me is Tim Schultz from uh, Sheboygan South. Tim, thanks for stopping in. I really appreciate mm -hmm. this. Uh, last year, you beat North three times in one season. Uh, that doesn't happen very often, whether it's the North side beating South or vice versa. Uh, talk a little bit about that experience and uh, what it was like. Um, well, I think it was great for the team. Um, the guys last year, they worked extremely hard. You know, had a lot of seniors. Last year, put a lot of time in. And uh, some of those guys were um, younger brothers of guys who had played. Um, so I think it's something that they can take as a badge of honor. But, you know, as we move forward, it's kind of that was last year and get ready for the next year. Now, last year was really a great year. You finished up 17 and 7 and 11 and 6 in conference, and uh, you were tied for fourth place, which uh, may not sound like very may not sound very impressive, but I think it really was because it, the conference was very very strong last year. Uh, how is that experience last year going to help you this year? Now, you said just said the mm -hmm. North South games won't matter, but uh, can the whole experience of last year? Help? I, I think definitely. I think one thing that a lot of people don't know um, is that when we got into January and February last year, our our starters, which we lost four for this year and coming into this year, um, our starters were getting beat by our subs in practice. And a lot of those guys and almost all those guys who were subs last year are now players this year that will that should step up and do some things on the varsity. So the experience of, you know, not, not only the journey of, you know, making it to sectional finals, winning regionals, um, winning, like you mentioned, those games against North, doing well in the conference. I think it all ties in, and you know, I, I don't know how people are going to pick us. I don't think we really care. I think the guys are excited about a new season, about you know, working hard. Um, they're going to work their tail off no matter what, but I think experience will really help. I know, and uh, not last year so much, but 
the year before last and the year before that even, uh, I know one of the things that was much to your chagrin was not finishing games. Mm -hmm. You know, you were in a lot of games and they were close ones and you just didn't quite get mm -hmm. it done. Last year, obviously, that wasn't the case. Well, there's still games last year where we didn't quite close up the way we'd want to, but um, it's something that we emphasize, um, especially, you know, the uh, little things of making the free throws, even simple things like baseline out of bounds, sideline out of bounds, trying to steal points here and there, and then just the composure. And really, I think maybe the biggest thing is the expectation that you can win and you will win. And maybe, hopefully, we turn that corner as a program last year. You mentioned that you lost uh, four starters from last year. Well, two of them were Peter Wolf and uh, Hemsing, your two guards, and uh, pretty hard to replace that kind of guard play. Yeah, you don't replace guys. You know, uh, Both of them uh, played parts of four years on varsity. One, Peter Wolf was a four-year starter. Uh, Hemsing was a three-year starter. They're all conference guys. Um, you don't replace that. You hope that they left a the mark, that guys who are coming up like uh, Brandon Bernabel, Ethan Berlin, guys who were backups to him last year, that they can come in and, and fill the role that they did. But it's big shoes to fill. Are those going to be the two people that start at the guard position for you this year? I, as I look at it right now, I would, I would guess so. And if they don't start, they're going to play a very prominent role. Um, right now, I couldn't pick a starting five. We had a chance to talk before we went on the air, and you'd mentioned that it's a bit of a tough start. Mm -hmm. uh, Jake Rissey won't play at all this year. He uh, hurt himself during football, and uh, Jake Reuter hurt himself during football. Mm -hmm. Also tried to play in your scrimmage the other day. Talk a little bit about him and uh, how um, the uh, team is moving along, well, even with the injuries. I can say definitely with the loss of Rissey. Um, he, he did not play a, a lot of minutes last year, but he, we got him in, and he was had a tremendous summer of basketball. Uh, somewhere all around him with football and training and uh, had himself in position where he could have some great success this year. Now Reuter, um, we think he'll be ready to go pretty soon. Um, he's anxious to play. Uh, it's something where he's a three-year varsity player um, along with Bernabeu. We have two of them and he's our lone returning starter so we're expecting big things out of him. Who is going to uh, move up from the JV team and, and be able to contribute uh, this year? I know we talked mm -hmm. about another player who's uh, hurt and out for the year. Uh, mm -hmm. Bailey Callahan broke his leg in, mm -hmm. in football, but uh, who else? Um, you look at Riley Tudis comes to mind right away, Cal Blusky. Um, there's numerous guys I'd be, you know, I'm missing. I could give you the whole list mm -hmm. that I think all the guys could contribute, um, but those are the top two that come to my mind. You start the season uh, this coming weekend. I'm not sure when this will uh, be broadcast, right. but uh, you have the Red Wing Classic coming up. And uh, who are the teams involved in that, and who do you play first, and how do you expect to do? Um, teams in there are ourselves, obviously. Um, Hortonville, who we play the first game, and then Oak Creek and Randolph. Um, and as far as how we expect to do, I mean, we have won our tournament, I think, the last two, maybe three years, like to continue that. Um, Randolph is the best or one of the best D4 um, programs in the whole entire state, so it's nice to have them in there. You have Division I recruits. Um, Hortonville, we played at the first game of regionals last year, and so we'll just see how we do. Last year, Ashwabanon, uh, pardon me, Bayport finished 17 and 0, and uh, Preble was next at 14 mm -hmm. and 3. Uh, you guys uh, had an excellent year, like I had mentioned earlier, 11-6. and six. How do you see the conference shaking out this year? Where do you see your team fitting in? I don't know. It's another. Our conference is tough. I mean, extremely tough. It, the, the, the best team in the conference, I think, going in, coaches would say it would be DePere. They're very similar to where Bay, Bayport was last year. Um, they just have the whole package as a team. Um, and then everyone else is just clumped together. There are no nights off. Um, you, you have to bring your game all the time. You mentioned earlier about Manitowoc mm -hmm. uh, being very tall this right. year. Yeah, exactly. Manitowoc will be probably four starters, six five and above. Um, so there are no <laughs> nights off. There's nothing easy. Well, we get you guys three times on the schedule. Hopefully, we'll you know follow you a little bit further when mm -hmm. we get into tournament play. But uh, Coach Schultz, I want to thank you for stopping in and. Uh, adding to uh, our TV experience. All right, thank you. When we come back, Chris will be with uh, Christian coach, Brett Flipsey. Excuse me. Excuse me, are you Santa Claus? I heard you might be him. If you are him, here's my list. Help the Marines make Christmas possible for less fortunate children. Donate a new toy to Toys for Tots.
Welcome back, everybody. I'm here with Coach Flipsy from Sheboygan Christian. A nice season a year ago, 22-2, uh, and 15-1 and one in the league. Thank you. Nice, nice season there. Um, did you realize that you're 62-10 and 10 over the last three years, 77-16 and 16 over the last four years? That's just awesome, Coach. What, any, you know, thing that's magical or do you expect this or the kids or? It's always the kids. You know, we always, always think we're all great coaches, but really when it comes down to it, you're only as good as the kids that you get. Um, the last, you know, six, seven years, however long it's been, um, we've had some really, really good kids. The program has really skyrocketed because we've taken, you know, the older kids have taken the younger kids under their wings, and, and, and that's really what I attribute it to. Um, the younger kids are looking at the older kids and wanting to play just like them. Well, that's just great. Also, last year in the tourna tournament, you knocked off the Goliath. Uh, Randolph has been the premier Division IV program in the state for over 15 years, eight championships. Um, do you think your kids now have the confidence that, hey, we can play with anybody now with that victory? Or Yeah, I, I believe so. Um, you know, beating Randolph, you know, that was like getting the monkey off your back. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, been, we've, we've been a very good program, but we've had to run into them, you know, every year for the last couple of years. And we've, you know, we've seemed to always lose to the state champion. And Randolph has always been in our way. They're a great program. And, you know, just by that win last year, I believe gives us a stepping stone this year um, to, you know, make another run. Unbelievable. Yeah, you lost to Benton last year, too, state champions yep. as well. What a, what a strange thing that is. Uh, I see that uh, you guys are, in some publications, are ranked number two in the state. And, you know, again, something probably new for your program. Um, we've always been sitting right there. Um, it's it's a nice honor beginning of the year, but it really doesn't mean anything. It's it's all on paper. Um, you, you still have to go out and play the games. You know, we could be ranked number two in state to start the season and and have a hiccup early on in the season and drop right out of the rankings. So, you know, that's all you know preseason stuff. Uh, you got to go out and play the games. I think our kids are hungry, and you know they they want to at least go back to where we were last year uh, with a very good shot at at making the next step. Same situation right here in, in the county, too. It seems like it's always been, Oostburg has always been the team to pick. Well, now it's Oostburg and Christian. And, and again, games against Oostburg obviously got to help you, you know, to build up for that, you know, successful years as well. You know, you've got North and South. You've got um, yeah, Sheboygan Christian, Oostburg. It's a great atmosphere. Um, whenever we play each other, the gyms are packed. You know, my, my, um, my before the game speech, is always about this is what you play high school basketball for. Uh, you know, you, you have, you know, 2,000 people, 2,000 people in the stands. You know, some are cheering, some are booing, but it's, it's just, it gets you ready for, for big games. Uh, with that a little bit, you know, you talked a little bit earlier about, you know, why things are successful. Uh, your coaching staff's been together a long time. Uh, continuity, other keys to success, you think? Or? Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, in my first couple of years coaching, we were trying to find that right, that right group, and I, I think we've got it now. And, and yeah, we have been for long for, together for a while. So, yeah. Senior dominated this year. That should help. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're going to go as far as our seniors will take us, yet we have some, some up-and-coming juniors, and they've got to show us that they're ready to play. Uh, we're, you know, our seniors are going to take us as far as we can go, um, but, you know, when they fail... Because there are times when the seniors are going to have, you know, some tough times throughout the year. But uh, those juniors are going to have to step up. And we don't know who they are yet. Um, you know, we're still early in the season and we're still playing that out. But, yeah, the seniors are, we have a strong group of seniors this year. Scrimmage go okay the other day? Yeah, yeah. And those are always fun. You know, you don't, you don't keep score. You don't, it's no wins or losses. You're just working on, on what's, what your weaknesses are. Well, for a long time here, just to finish up a little bit here, that, you know, it seems like, North and South has been on the, the Sheboygan County radar, and uh, you know it's always you know Kohler had some nice success back in the in the 90s and stuff like that. I think Sheboygan Christian's a team that you know people in the county should come out and see. They've been under the radar, but I think it's one of those things that I think it, you know people should come out and see you guys play. Yeah, I, I don't think we're we're an unknown, uh, but we are the smallest school in in town, and um, we're just a lot of fun. We don't we're we're not a team that you know sits and and hunkers down and plays defense. We, you know, we like to run. We like to push the score, push the tempo, uh, play good defense. Um, hopefully we're fun to watch. And, 
you know, if, if you all have a chance to come out and see us, that would be wonderful. You also mentioned, as we were talking before, you got a new gym. Yes, we, uh, we updated our gym. We don't have a new gym, uh, but, you know, new floor. You know, we've lost our, our, uh, the atmosphere of the old barn, uh, but, you know, it'll be fun this year. I know when uh, Coach Desatel changed over into the field houses, I, I thought it just kind of took the students away a little bit, so it's, it's nice not, to hear not, that the students will still be there, but just, just the colors will be a little yeah, dim. It's, it's not quite the field house, <laughs> but we like it. Well, good luck this season. We're going to have you a couple times, and uh, again, thanks for coming in. Thank when I much. return, we'll have Coach Desatel from Sheboygan North. Welcome back. We're here with Coach Tom Desatel. Coach, last year you had a real fine player in Nolan Free. Uh, led the state in scoring. Have you ever had a kid that was that high in the state in scoring ever? Usually I jump on him and don't let him shoot that <laughs> much, but uh, Nolan was special, uh, no question about it. He's one that everybody kind of wants to have because he's such a great leader and he does so many things other than just score points. Yeah, and the year before you had TJ Kellner, so you had TJ was a prolific scorer, you had Nolan Free a prolific scorer. A lot more balance on your club this year? I think it will be. I think we're going to see that. I'd love to see somebody emerge and just be a, a first-team all-stater or something like that. I don't know that that's going to be possible, but we didn't forecast Nor Nolan to be that either. We've got a lot of, a lot of contributors, a lot of potential contributors. I came around practice and watching a little bit of some of your kids, and you, know, you look at David Britton and uh, Mark Tuttle, and they seem a lot bigger, faster, stronger. I mean, they, they really look like they've really hit the, the uh, off-season workouts. Well, you know they're in the weight room uh, year-round. Um, they're playing sports year-round, uh, whether it be basketball, which a lot of them do, are doing much, much of the summer. But they're getting stronger. There's no question about that. And you've noticed that in all sports, I'm sure, in baseball as well. Yeah, and, you know, you do a nice thing in the off-season. You include the girls, too. You can even see the improvement in the girls' program. I know they're joining you as well. Well, they're, they're into, into it, and they're not going to back down. That's the type of uh, female athletes we've got at North High School. We're kind of proud of them just as what, much. We're disappointed we can't see them as much as we'd like to. You got, I believe, 10 returning players this year? We've got, we've got quite a few. Quite a few. Uh, um, um, Devin York came on the team at the, yeah. uh, for the tournament last year and played some, and everybody's kind of excited about him. He wasn't really on the varsity last year, but... Uh, we have significant returnees, there's no question. Yeah, and you got a lot of experience. You got Tanner back and uh, mm -hmm. Derek back as well. Yeah, Tanner, Derek, and David all started at one point in time last year. Jake Stengel was probably uh, our best player outside of Nolan the last couple of games of the year. He went through an injury all summer that he was casted and uh, really got the clearance just to play at the beginning of the um, uh, fall uh, football season. We've got Mark Tuttle as well, and uh, so we've got quite some uh, um, competition for spots. Yeah, you do. Uh, looks like De Pere looks to be kind of the class of the conference, kind of like Bayport last year. Bayport, for most people who don't know, I mean, they almost got to this, they almost beat Madison Memorial last year, and looks mm -hmm. like De Pere's got kind of a similar type team. Yeah, De Pere's never been there. Um, kind of unusual. Bayport put together a couple of strong teams back to back, and uh, uh, De Pere is, on paper, the best. Uh, but like everything else, uh, they have a, they had a strong freshman last year that's mm -hmm. going to be out for part of the season. And uh, again, yeah, how many losses like that can you suffer? Um, uh, but they are the team to beat. Yeah, I see too that the boys' state tournament is going to be before the girls' state tournament this year. Boys' basketball started a week before, uh, not a week before, but two days before. Women's basketball, you're correct, the boys' tournament will be one week before the girls' tournament, and both will be at the Kohl Center this next March. Yeah, and that's quite a change a little bit for that as well. Do you like the new conference? As you've been in it now for a couple of years, it seems like it's a ragged 12-game schedule, you know, or excuse me, playing all 11 teams in a 12-team league. Do you like playing that? Um, it's, it's different. It's different, and you can like it or dislike it. Uh, I think you have to deal with it. You have to, uh, as a coach, you say, look, this is what we've got to do. We play each team in our division twice. We play every team in the other division once, and which is a more clean schedule than we had the first two years where we played, an, quote, an extra game against the other division. We played 17 conference games, which 
wasn't fair. Uh, and so it's better in that regard. Yeah, but you get cut down. I, I remember the old days we used to take trips to Janesville and Wauwatosa, and so you're really limited on your non-conference schedule. And I know already, you won't know this already, but they're regularly going to play Milwaukee Riverside early this year. And uh, does that cut down on your non-conference? No, actually, um, like baseball, like all other sports, we're playing 22 games this year for the first time. All um, high school basketball teams have the opportunity to play 22 games and 20 games on their uh, freshman schedule. So, uh, again, uh, we wanted to play a couple non-conference games before our first game of the year, which is... Uh, coming up on the, uh, the Tuesday after um, Thanksgiving, and that's against De Pere, a team you already mentioned. We've got South the following Saturday, uh, so we want to prepare for those. Yeah, I was going to mention that already. North-South came a little bit earlier this year, and even have them in January this year, not in February, that's, that's a little early, and it seems like it's been that way the last couple of years. It seems like you always open with South quite early. Well, they have a schedule rotation, and they flip. Um, De Pere moves to the top of the schedule this year. South is the next on the level, and so that's the way it goes. Well, we look forward to the season coming up, and uh, thanks for coming in. It's always a pleasure to have you. When we return, Marty and I will be finishing up the show. Well, Chris, another show in the books, and uh, we want to thank the coaches for stopping in. They always make this a, a really a pleasant experience, and uh, it adds a lot to the whole season for us. Yeah, I know, and it's tough for them, too. I know they're trying to get ready for the season to get started, for them to take out a little bit out of their practice day and things. It's nice for them to come. And it is a, it is a chore because they literally do take time out of their day to, to come in, and uh, most of the time they're either here right after practice or just before and, and uh, running off to practice. Let's talk a little bit about the two uh, conferences that we'll cover this year and uh, make our predictions. Hopefully we'll do better than we did in football. <laughs> Let's talk about the CLC. Uh, it's pretty much a lock in terms of who people are predicting, and that's uh, Sheboygan Christian. But who do you see? I think it's Sheboygan Christian and Oostburg. Uh, I know the Keller boys are coming up. They're a little bit bigger and stronger, and they got a couple classmates over there that can be tough. So I think it is going to be a two-dog race between Christian and Oostburg and you know I think sometimes we overlook the smaller schools but I think she, people should get out and look at these teams this year They're, they'll be a lot of fun. We're going to have them on our schedule uh, a number of times this year. I also think Christian is uh, going to be uh, going to be the winner and I matter of fact I think they might be a runaway winner. I think the battle is going to be for second and third place with uh, Christian uh, pardon me with uh, uh, Howard's Grove and uh, and uh, Oostburg, I think it's going to be a really tough battle between those. And don't overlook uh, Cedar Grove, Belgium, because they got a big guy coming back from last year. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, Fox River Classic Conference. And uh, last year we had a team, Bayport, won all the games in the conference. And uh, I don't think it'll be like that this year. But who do you see as uh, being the champs? Well, I think there will be a runaway, and I think it's going to be De Pere. And De Pere is a lot like uh, Bayport was a year ago. They lost by two points to Bayport at the end of the season in the sectional finals. Bayport should have, could have maybe even made it to the state championship game. But De Pere comes in, and they are loaded for Bear and a, a great team to watch. I think they come in on December 1st to Sheboygan North, and I think that that team by far will be up there. I think Sheboygan South uh, had a little bit of graduation. It's going to be tough to replace those guards, but they're going to be they're going to be back again and much improvement by the big men over at Sheboygan North too. So they'll be fun too. And what about North? They lost uh, Nolan Free, but uh... yeah, Nolan Free gone to graduation and actually starting at UW Whitewater right now, and uh, they're going to have to find somebody for them. So they're going to have a lot of balance over there. And I was over watching them shoot a little bit, and they got some talent. All right, with that, we're going to sign off, and uh, thanks a lot, Chris, for uh, joining me on the show this year, and uh, we'll see you down the road.